Rivian has made more options available when configuring its pickup truck, the R1T. The Rivian R1T now has a base price for its adventure package of $69,900, down from the $73,000 listed prior to this update. This accompanies some changes in the battery options along with the combinations with the drive system that they can be configured with. Rivian has added a new battery option, the Standard Plus, in addition to the existing Standard Pack. The big unknown is the charging performance as we don't know anybody having it as yet. A future video for that. The Standard Battery is included in the basic package and implies no additional cost and is rated at 270 miles of range. This base level battery in the Rivian delivery vans was an LFP battery, but from what we learn, it is probably an NMC when optioned in the R1T. Another important thing to note is that the standard pack can't be optioned with the all-terrain wheels. That could probably be on account of range concerns. In our video on September 1st, 2023, we had presented the first set of options that Rivian had offered on its drive system and battery pack configurations. Rivian's configurations can get confusing. And that video explains the first set of options Rivian offered, which are followed by these ones. You can check the link to that video here or in the description. The Standard Plus battery is at an additional cost of $3100 and is rated at 315 miles of range. The large pack is now a $9100 upgrade and is rated at an EPA estimated 352 miles of range. This is the option that Rivian started with. When it first launched the R1T. The max pack is now a dollar nineteen thousand one hundred upgrade and has an EPA estimated range of four hundred and ten miles. That's up from dollar sixteen thousand odd. When configuring with the drive system, the original quad motor system can still only be configured with the large pack. That's the original Rivian for you. The dual motor performance can be configured with the standard plus, the large and the max pack. The base dual motor can be configured with all four, the standard, the standard plus, the large and the max pack. The base dual motor and the base standard pack is in my opinion the best option for daily driving. This should suffice for 95% of all users and a similar amount of overall use of the truck. The Rivian R1T is a very good software defined product with a good driving experience, a comfortable feel and a very attractive appearance. But when it comes to delivering truck-like functions, it's probably going to be short on a Ford F-150 Lightning, especially the heavy-duty stuff and hence I am a bit disappointed with all these options. In terms of how they would deliver on those parameters and for those customers, to me the R1T will always be bought for the adventure, good commute and that very cool feel. The software is a big plus though. The standard and standard plus now made available with the R1T are variants that are surely software adjusted and probably will serve Rivian in bringing the perceived cost down with minimum real investment and also help drive that path to profitability. But as a user, I see no real value in any of the upgrades. If I were to buy this truck, I would happily stay with the base dual motor and standard pack that would fulfill nearly all my requirements and so I feel it would for most. Digging further, we discover that the standard pack is 106 kWh, the standard plus is 121 kWh, the large pack is 131 kWh and the max pack is 141 kWh. All the numbers to be confirmed from the EPA submissions. That's interesting as for the first $3100 moving from the standard to standard plus, the user gets the highest 15 additional kilowatt hours of battery capacity. The next 10 kilowatt hours comes for an additional $6,000 moving to the large pack. And the max pack which was just hiked by another $3,000 odd brings just 10 additional kilowatt hours of battery capacity for a stunning $10,000 on top of the large pack or $19,100 on top of the included standard pack. Remember, large battery packs charge very poorly up top. So when you need it the most, you will anyway only charge the same number of cells for the most part. Also in the standard pack, I think it's simply unlocking the top buffer when moving to standard plus. So if you stay in the standard pack and charge to the max, you are effectively the same as in the standard plus. 
just more factors on why I feel disenchanted with most of these options. It would have been truly commendable had Rivian unveiled a truly larger battery pack and given more range, especially as the range nearly halves when towing. There are several truck users who would feel better with that. In our comparison of the R1T with the Cybertruck and the F-150 Lightning, the link of which you can see here or in the description, we saw the R1T trail in things like bidirectional charging, which though not a big issue today, could be important going forward. Something that both the other two trucks are capable of. There is no dearth of places to improve upon and will look up to Rivian for the same. It's anyway the choice of the users as applicable to their given conditions that matter in the end. These are simply my rants on these developments. These options have interesting implications both with the Federal Electric Vehicle Tax Credit and your option to lease a Rivian. If you configure the very basic Rivian R1T, the lease price goes as low as $5.36 per month. That's an R1T with the basic included options, the base dual motor with the standard pack, the standard 21 inch wheels and the LA silver color. All Rivian leases I believe have a base down payment of $6,000. Beware that you may have to assume a few hundred over the monthly figure based on levies and taxes or at least $3,000 of additional cost on the total price. Also the $1,800 in destination fees. I would assume a figure of $700 per month to the least. That's including the $7,500 EV lease credit that the vehicles qualify for even when all Rivian vehicles qualify for a max $3750 in tax credit when bought as on date. I assume the same for the new battery pack option offered now. Rivian enables customers to buy the vehicles at the end of the lease, for which I would assume a residual value of at least $50 to $55,000. Very clearly, Rivian is trying to exhaust the inventory and we anticipate an R1 refresh by the year end. Rivian has already promised an announcement on March the 7th for the next generation R2 vehicle. This is expected to be a smaller size SUV. We look forward to that but without reading too much into it. Often these events only offer introductions with a promised future date of actual availability. Never the same a date to mark out. If you want to see our video on the 5 electric vehicles coming in 2024 based on GM's Ultium platform, check the link here or in the description. See you in the next one.